Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Rahim Mehtar bringing you another video today on portrait editing. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna go from the left shot to the right shot. I basically take a daylight shot and turn it into a night cyberpunk shot. Now, before I begin, I just want to let you know this is a tutorial breakdown. It's not a tutorial per se because this entire thing took me 10 hours to do. I did do a screen record but it is way too much information for me to put it in a video and a speed edit wouldn't help you guys. So I just thought I would go layer by layer and tell you what exactly my thought process was and what I do. So the first thing I did was obviously clean up the image. I did some like skin retouching and stuff like that. Uh, I have tutorials on it if you want to dive into it. I'm not going to go into detail over here. And the next thing I wanted to do was obviously is mask the background. Uh, that was the first thing because I want to imitate the light that is coming from the back. For that I went to Unsplash and I found this image. Now in order for us to kind of get a more realistic feel I added a bit of Gaussian blur to this image because it's in the background and it is kind of out of focus. The other thing is that when you're masking windows or background, things like that that are not in focus, you want to obviously add a bit of feather to make it look realistic. And then I just added some highlights to it to just give it a pop. And because I wanted to go for the blue pink color, I just gave it a pink color. Uh, I'm going to tell you later on what this tiny layer is because I added super late in the edit and I'll tell you why. Uh, just removed some other distractions. Now this was a major exposure change that I did because obviously I want to turn this into a night shot. So I just brought my exposure down using a curves adjustment. I masked out her face and hand because I wasn't sure how exactly do I want to expose it right now. So I just masked it out. So I basically just darkened the car to give it a more night look. Then the next thing I did was add the color grade. Now this was my major color grade that I added was this. Now how I, how I did this was I basically created a gradient and what I did was I added soft light blend mode. Now the reason I did it this way, so let's imagine if I just did this normal and just used a solid color layer. What it would do is, can you see in this image how there's a bit of discoloration in these areas. These are based, basically the areas where the gradient wouldn't apply so much. That's how we were able to preserve a lot of like skin tones and certain highlights in the image. If this was a normal solid color, it would just apply all over it if you just did it soft light. So that's why I used this particular thing. Again, then I just took a curves adjustment, added some shadows in the blues as you can see, and this is what you get. The next thing I did was I obviously didn't like the beige jacket. It was distracting me a lot. So I just made like a quick selection using pen tool and the quick selection tool actually and just darkened it. Now for this I used overlay as my blending mode because um, again it was seeping in that blue color that I already have in my grid even though when I took a slightly grayish tone over here. Now the reason I took this is again it's a lot of trial and error over the years so try playing around with blend modes or watch tutorials on it because I don't want to dive into it but it really helped me get those light blue highlights on her jacket which I would probably use later on and I'll show you how I use it later on. Now the next thing I did was I wanted the backlit effect on her hair. Now this is usually a very hard thing to do if you haven't caught it in camera because it's just very hard to select hair, especially from a busy background. So what I did was, so th what we'll do first is just add some neon lights first just to give it some idea of how do we want her hair to be lit. So I just use a solid layer, reduce my flow on the brush and just paint where I would assume the light is coming in. So you want to paint a bit over here, over here. You obviously, as you start going down, you want to get lighter and lighter because that's how light would work. Now this is where I got it a bit on her hair. Obviously when light strikes your hair from the side or the backside, you get like a nice backlit effect. This is what I wanted to create. It was quite hard. So I did select and color range. Um, I don't want to get into it again. You can probably look at videos online but basically what color range does is I can basically select darks 
and highlights using this method. So I basically selected her hair. This way it doesn't give you a very clean selection if there's not a luminosity difference. So it was quite hard to do it, but I did what I could. So as you can see, this is the selection I got. I added some hue saturation and just brightened a bit more because that's how backlit works. Uh, if you want to understand how exactly to go about backlit lighting hair, Google images, see how light interacts with hair and you'll get like a better idea. I've also, what I've done is I have hand painted some strands. Uh, I'll show you as you can see because it was again very hard to select it. So I just like hand painted them. just to give it a more realistic looking effect. And then again, I just like started doing basically the same selections and added another solid color layer bef below, added some highlights to it just to get a more realistic um, look. I know this is not very helpful because there was a lot of trial and error over this, but just I would suggest is go online, watch photos how light interacts with hair and learn some selection techniques to understand how exactly do you want to go about it. The next thing was uh, getting those highlights on your shirt because how, again, it would react. So I just, again, created a solid layer, hand painted the highlights on your jacket with like less flow and I got this image. Now the next thing I wanted to do was obviously replicate this lighting on the steering wheel as well. So I just used the pen tool, created this selection, this, this border, added some Gaussian blur, just so that you get a more realistic look. Again, because the staring is a little out of focus compared to her face. So that's how you get the whole thing. So this was all of my pink tones if I show you. This is this is before and this is after. You can see it is already starting to look good. The next thing what I wanted to do is I wanted to darken the seat uh, just because I wanted to add some cool color effect on it. Uh, this is what I did. Just took a pen tool, made two stripes. I added glow to it. Um, just you can go to outer glow. As you can see, this is the difference. This is just like normal, basically like solid lines. And if you just add like outer glow, what it does, it gives a bit more glow and a bit of blur as well, which was going again with the depth of field. You can play around with these values, whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong to do it. Again, you pick your colors, how soft or light, you want them. This is all personal preference. Uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. Now the next thing was I wanted to make this the whole Tron look to this image and what I decided to do is can you see this gray black border? I just thought I would change this into like a neon color look. Again I just took the pen tool, created some selections over here and I got this. So this was my initial color what I got. This is the inner shadow. So it just like basically like colors it inside with like a slight glow on the edges and you put outer glow. The outer glow is mostly mostly more important. You can probably just get away with getting a darker color over here. Um, I did the same thing over here. Now the reason I didn't do both of this on the exact same layer is because the stripe is thinner over here compared to over here, the glowing works completely differently. So I just had to do it separately just to give it a more realistic look. Again, this was some trial and error, so you probably would have the same issue if you were doing it. Then I again wanted to have this light being reflected on her jacket, so I just hand painted this using the overlay blend mode, match the colors. You could again do this with the solid color, again painted some more highlights and folds just to give it a more realistic look. Always remember whenever you're changing lighting around, how that light interacts with your subject is the key of a good composite. How it's reacting with this arm and this arm, that's what's selling the effect. And if you don't do that right, then the whole comp composite just won't look that good. Then again, I wanted this effect to replicate on her hair as well, slightly brushed it. Added soft light blend mode. Not sure what that does. Um, now I also wanted this light to kind of show on her hand, on her chin, just so again, going for the realistic look. So as you can see, 
it just adds like a slight blue tinge on her hand her chin again reduce the flow or just reduce the opacity for this layer I wanted to add like a nice glow over here just to give it that cool oomph to it did that again Uh, again, so now I came remember I, when I said there was like a lot of trial and error I realized now I wanted to grade it again, even though I had done it earlier uh, There's no way that you could have You could have tons of experience and still have to go back and forth and that's why I couldn't get all the exposures right in the first place Just gonna darken this image again I use some color balance to grade this side of the shot and add some blues did that for pink I obviously wanted it only on this side so I masked out this areas so I only got the pinks in midtones over here it's based sorry the shadows because there's more shadow over here that looks good again added some jacket light just to give it more of a cleaner look uh, added more exposure just to pop those highlights a bit more and added again a color balance layer just because I kept wanting to grade it more again a lot of trial and error I wanted to paint these white highlights from the original shot itself so I just selected them and I used pin light for this now the reason I use pin light is the screen mode doesn't work which is what usually you would use for glow it works but you still see a lot of white because the background is white so I just turned it to pin light and that started to look pretty good for me now I wanted to add a more punch to the shot so I added some vibrance to the overall shot some pinks and blues added more vibrance just to the blues this time with this layer as you can see there are two layers of vibrance so this is the overall except the face skin tones always preserve your skin tones and this is for just this part so you get more blues over here now the whole skin was a very tricky part right from the beginning because I wanted that blue cast on her face obviously to mimic the ambient lighting at the same time I didn't want to go overboard with it and lose skin tones so I kept that masked out throughout and this is where I add a bit of blue over here just go to color balance I go mid tones and I add some blues over here so the next thing I did was sharpen the image so how basically you generally sharpen images as I'm gonna disable my layer mask and as you can see it's all gray so basically what you do is you take your original image from your bottom layer and what you do is you just go to filter other high pass and put value of one or two and when you do that you basically get this gray image which basically just gets you details in it and you just click overlay this is just like a tip nothing related to the neon edit and I just added some brightness at the end so this was your before and after remember that small layer that I said that I'll come back to later was this one's basically there was just like some reds that were in her fingers that came out more prominently when the color grade was on so I had to come down and just like remove that nothing to measure again you could just do that with using selective color and a bunch of other tools so yeah this was before and after at the end of the day always remember composites are all about mimicking light so you just want to take your time play around there's no right or wrong way to do it just make sure at the end of the day the composite shouldn't look like a composite like it should look realistic and uh, that's about it if you like this video tutorial breakdown please let me know in the comment section below subscribe to my channel like my video and I shall see you guys next time take care